Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the prayer and the pledge by Councilwoman Sherry Gidger. Spirit of the living God, our Father, thank you that we are still walking and breathing among the land of the living tonight. I ask that we humble ourselves before you tonight. Help us as a governing body to conduct ourselves wisely and just on behalf of your precious people. Let us not move without your presence. Let us not move without seeking your guidance and your wisdom concerning every matter on this agenda tonight. Let our agenda line up with your agenda for this city and your people. Lord, we need you like never before. Help us to continue to be one heart, one soul, one body, have one vision on one accord. Dispatch your warring angels on the steps of City Hall tonight. Our city and the homes within this city from the throne of grace. And we plead the blood of Jesus over this governing body and the citizens of New Iberia. We rebuke the spirit of domestic terrorism in our city. We command it to flee in the name of Jesus. Oh God, go before this governing body tonight and help us lead as leaders of this community to conduct ourselves properly and this meeting to be done in decency and in order. Father God, we continue to, we ask that you continue to touch our mayor as he leads us in moving this city forward. We ask all these things in the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem Dan Doyle. Here. Uh, Council Member Natalie Lopez is absent due to illness. Council Member Moreland Lewis. Present. Council Member David Broussard. Here. Council Member Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Council Member Sherry Guidry. Present. Council Member Dustin Square. Here. Thank you. Our first agenda item, number one, is public comment. This is uh, a time that we hear from you. If you have up to three minutes, uh, please silence your cell phones. And there's no going back and forth. You just make your public comment. And we have some cards tonight. Madam Clerk. Terry Duhon on agenda item number six. Mike's on. Yes, sir. My name is Terry Duon. I am the former mayor of the city of Jennings. I was employed with the city for over 30 years. The last 14 is the mayor. And I'm here tonight in uh, support of uh, our current chief, uh, Todd Dalbor. It's, uh, I have to admit, it is a bittersweet moment for me. Um, Todd is not only uh, our chief, but he's also a personal friend of mine. And as much as I, I hate to see him uh, leave the city of Jennings, I know that it w will be a uh, huge opportunity for Todd if he is selected to uh, serve as the next chief in New Iberia. But I also believe it will be a huge opportunity for the city of New Iberia. Todd has uh, demonstrated in the last seven years that he is not only a, a person of high moral character and integrity, he is a great leader. He has uh, helped uh, the city in a time of great need seven years ago when we had uh, some problems uh, in Jennings. I, I, I'm sure that uh, uh, everybody is pretty familiar with some of the issues that we had, but Todd came in and did an out, outstanding job in helping to uh, right those problems. Um, I think that Todd would be an excellent choice if, if y'all so choose to, uh, to choose uh, Todd as y'all's next chief. As I said, uh, it is a bittersweet moment for, for, for me personally because I really hate to see Todd leave Jennings, but I know without a doubt that he will do an outstanding job for this community and its people. So um, I hope that y'all choose to, to accept his, uh, him as your, as your next chief. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Pastor Gerald 
Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm here to Good speak afternoon. on behalf of our Chief of Police, Todd Dalbaugh. Uh, I've known Chief Dalbaugh for some seven years. As our former mayor has stated, he came to Jennings during some turbulent times. During that time, Jennings had undergone some serious problems. Uh, the crime rate had reached a very frightening proportion. Uh, since he has been chief of police, the crime rate has gone down tremendously. This man came in uh, as a, a friend. Uh, he befriended the ministers of our community, the community leaders. Uh, he did an excellent job with the department and also initiating some of the programs for the betterment of our community. I share Mayor Duhon's sentiments. We are losing a superb chief of police. I'm losing a personal friend and brother. Uh, this man is a very skillful police administrator, very personable. Uh, he's a man of great moral character. If you select him as your next chief, you are selecting a man for these times. Todd is a wonderful human being. You will find if you select him as chief of police that he will be an asset to the city of New Iberia. Uh, he comes with uh, high qualifications. He, he is a lover of people. He's very fair, but he is not naive. He's young and energetic enough to deal with uh, the aggressive problems uh, of crime. He's also mature enough uh, to know when somebody is trying to uh, get over on him, so to speak. But uh, you will be getting a fine chief if you select Chief Todd Devil. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Patricia Hippolyte on agenda item number six. Well, um, do I need to go up there? Because I really can't stand, but I think I speak loud enough. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll allow that, Pat. I, I, I know you speak loud. <laughs> <laughs> I looked around and I knew a few people that walked in that's going to be representing the city. And I know that the violence is not on the agenda. But I, I realized to address the chief of police that's coming here into our city, we need to address, because that's our major problem right now. And as we came here tonight, there was a shooting, another one in our city. And I just need to share this with the newcomers along with the, the city. I spoke on Thursday night, but I'm speaking tonight. On Wednesday, a few Wednesdays ago, when the store was robbed on Ann Street, when I called on Wednesday night from Super One, letting them know my daughter saw six guys walking in that area crossed over, I didn't realize until I saw the video that that incident right there would have saved that store from being robbed. I, she couldn't visually see, I can't, couldn't visually, when I came into my area, and until that get, that get corrected, we are going to have more problems than we have right now. And with the chief of police, I hope you coming in knowing <coughs> that this isn't an easy task. This is a war zone, whether you guys in here realize that or not. And that's my final word on that. Thank you, Beth. Mr. Michael Bell on agenda item number six. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. I'm sure, Mayor, you know I have been talking about this for many years. And if Mr. Delbor is anything like the people say, that's exactly what we need in this community. I've always said that we need community policing because when you have community policing, you get to know the taxpayers again. You don't just know the little gangsters. 
You know the everyday people that are working, you know the elderly people, and it's a win-win situation with the community policing. I told you I had the good opportunity to work with the San Francisco Police Department in the juvenile division. We took the rundown neighborhood that was drugged and infested, but the first thing we knew, we needed to get to know the people. And we went door to door getting to know these people. We had special police officers. You have to have the right attitude. You have to know the handicap. You have to know how to deal with the mentally disturbed. You have to have that. If you don't have that, we have fighting a losing battle. But we did that, went door to door, and believe it, we made a terrible situation out of a wonderful situation. We didn't solve all the crimes because you can't do that. We need community policing where the elderly people feel free. I heard the sheriffs made a comment and said, well, people have to talk, sure. But people are not going to talk if they don't feel free to express themselves with the police department. And if the police department don't feel free to talk to the citizen, because it's a win-win, you see. When you have the police department communicating with the public, you can't do nothing but win. And that's what's been our problem. We have police officers, and not all. I have enough sense to know we have good police officers that are coming in the neighborhood, they'll back up in the yard and don't speak. Don't say nothing. Of course, that, that's bitter to the people that, that's taxpayers and that people that work in that community. That's a bitter situation. I experienced that. A guy drove up in my yard, I'm sitting on the porch, and I work for a living and I'm retired as well. You don't speak, you have an attitude. And I know, like I said, we have good police officers, but it's not going to work regardless of who you have. But I'm glad to hear this man has the right, he sounds like he has the right quality, something that is needing, a person that can reach out to the community. And I, I'm not asking favoritism because I never was fortunate enough to receive favoritism, okay? I'm just asking for fairness in our community. It's a bad thing that you have elderly people that has been there all their life. When I was young, the, the West End was one of the most prominent area in the city. And we're talking about the most, one of the most heaviest populated area in the city. Another thing, we should have a centrally located police station in that area. The only time the people see the police department is when something happens, it's too late. Listen to what people are talking about. People like myself, the elderly people, that, that's too afraid to come out. You have to learn from them. And we have to have police officers that is qualified to deal with the handicapped, to deal with the mentally disturbed. We have mentally disturbed people that runs down Hopkins Street that throw away the garbage cans. And we lock them up in jail. Something is wrong. So we have to make sure our officers that we do get is qualified. Thank you. God bless this great city. And I hope we do appoint him if he's right. Because he sounds like the type of person we need in this city. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Uh, Ms. Robbie Bethel, Bethel on agenda item number six. Good, more, good afternoon, Mayor. Good um, Council and everybody um, that's present. I'm going to speak on agenda item six. Um, I wasn't present for a couple of the other uh, meetings. I don't know Mr. Todd Delbor. I've heard good things about him. Uh, but what I'm here to speak on is the fact that I don't know him and I'm not going to stand here and pretend as though it's okay for just someone to come into the city that we are not acquainted with. Um, Mr. Delbor is coming from uh, Jennings. And what I would like to know is in Jennings, I've heard several people speak on the fact that Jennings has had some problems. Uh, crime, uh, they've had a lot of uh, uh, prostitution. Uh, liquor stores, they, they've had everything that West End has had and the city has had. But what I want to know tonight is Jennings was about, it's about 10,000 people. The city of New Iberia is about 30,000 or so. Jennings has had eight murders 
that were unsolved and still unsolved. So I would like to know tonight, we have about 10 that's unsolved. And we're 32, 30 to 32,000 people. From where I stand, if Mr. Delbor is as good of a chief of police and he's qualified, then I want to know what will he do different in the city of New Iberia that he couldn't get done in Jennings. We have these murders that we need to solve. We have these crimes that we need to get under control. We have shootings, not just in the West End, there was one across the bayou today. So I just want to know, as a citizen, right now we're in survival mode. And then when you get in survival mode, favoritism goes out the window, friendship goes out the window. We're looking at how do we save our city? How do we save our children? How do we save the grandmothers? So I just want to know tonight, before you make that final vote, what will we get for the money that we will be paying as taxpayers that Jennings population could not get in a town of 10,000? Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That ends our public comment. Thank you all, all very much. Now we move on to agenda item number two. Acceptance of the minutes of the November 7, 2017 meeting as published on November 16, 2017. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by uh, <laughs> Councilman Lewis and a second by Councilwoman Deidre Ledbetter. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, please vote your machines. Thank you all very much. Uh, agenda item three, persons to address the council, we have none. Madam Clerk, item four. Public hearings. Uh, a public hearing on introduction of budget amendment ordinance number 2017-2018-01, which notice was published on November 16, 2007. I need a motion to open the public hearing. Motion, motion by Council Member Broussard, second by Council Member Kidry. Do we have any public comment on this item? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Councilmember Broussard, second by Councilmember Guidry. Public hearing on introduction of ordinance providing for the levy of the one half percent sales and use tax authorized at the special election held in the city on October 14, 2017, which notice was published on November 16, 2017. I need a motion to open the public hearing. Motion by Councilmember Lewis. I need a second. Second. Uh, Councilmember Sweer got this one. <laughs> Spreading it around. Uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Motion to close by Councilmember Ledbetter and a second by Councilmember Guidry. Thank y'all. Madam Clerk. Ordinances. Budget Amendment Ordinance Number 2017-2018-01, amending the ordinance, levying certain taxes, appropriating the funds necessary to defray the expenses and liabilities of the City of New Iberia for the year 2017-2018, to transfer funding from fiscal year 2017-2018 to amend budget for salary per, for police chief, assistant chief, major, and secretary and for transfer of funds for police administration salary into sales tax receipts and to budget the cost of a storage unit for records and ar archives. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilmember Lewis. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Swear. Do we have any discussion on this side? Let me put them. Mayor, we um, talked about taking that $200,000 from the disaster fund. Yes, sir. And when the tax all start coming in, we're going to re put the money back into the disaster fund? Yes, we are. Is that the same as we're doing a general fund for this rental building? Is that put the 2100 back in there? I hadn't planned on putting the 2100 back. If y'all <laughs> want me to, we can. Well, you know, I mean, so we can uh, make sure the monies that we're spending okay, we can. are put aside. We can. That's not a problem. So we'll put back the $2,100 as well. Okay. 
And I'm hoping that once we set up the new building, we'll have room to do storage in a portion of the new building up in the front where narcotics and detectives will be, and we'll no longer need the storage. But I know for years the city did rent them, so if I run out of room, you'll hear the story and I'll come back. But let's say for now that, yes, I can pay that back to you. Thank you. Okay, so to be clear, um, Mayor, we're taking the 200000 out of the disaster plan. That's what we're going to use for, to move this money around? Yes. To, okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, thanks. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Great. Madam Clerk, 5B. An ordinance providing for the levy within the city of New Iberia, State of Louisiana, effective January 1st, 2018, of a one half percent sales and use tax upon the sale at retail, the use, the lease, or rental, the consumption and the storage for use or consumption of tangible personal property, and upon the sale of services in said city and for the assessment, collection, payment thereof, and the dedication of the proceeds of said tax and the purpose for which the proceeds of the tax may be expended said tax having been authorized at a special election held in the city of New Iberia on October 14, 2017. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by yeah. Councilwoman second. Guidry, second by Councilwoman Ledger. Do we have any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Great, thank y'all. Madam Clerk, item number six. Introduction of Todd Dalvor, Police Chief and Ratification by Council. Advertising for Police Chief was published in the city's official journal beginning on November 5th, 2017 and also on the City of New Iberia's website. Applications for a qualified Police Chief were accepted into the deadline of November 15, 2017 at 4.30 p.m. as per the advertisement. Only one applicant submitted an application with the appropriate qualifications. Great. Um, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilmember Swear, second by Councilmember Ledbetter. And if it'd be okay, what I'd like to do is, uh, it's okay with y'all, I'd like to let Todd come up and make a statement. And then after that, I'm going to open up the floor because I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is, uh, uh, and I, you started, Miss uh, Miss Gidry started with a prayer that mentions humble yourself, and I think that's appropriate at the moment because uh, my former mayor, Mr. Terry Duhon, and Reverend Perkins, who have become very close to me, I've been very close with over these past seven years in Jennings. Um, I'm humbled by their kind words. Uh, I know that there was several other people that uh, have given character references. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we do our jobs and things that we do, we don't get to see how, what people's reflections are of how they feel about the performance of your work. And uh, this process has allowed me to see that. And not many people have an opportunity to do that. So I feel extremely blessed. Um, some of the things that uh, have come up tonight is community policing. Uh, that is absolutely where my philosophy is, where it falls. Um, and I, what I'm going to kind of talk about is also going to address maybe one of the concerns that one of our residents had, um, you know, because this community doesn't owe its police officers trust. The police officers need to earn that trust in the community. Uh, that's where my philosophy comes in about how our police officers should uh, conduct themselves on a daily basis. You should get to know the, the community, the people that you represent, the people that you serve. I've always felt that the protect and serve portion of the police model that goes out through our nation should be serve and protect. We serve first. Protecting becomes an easy part of our job. It's what we're trained to do. The serving part is what makes our community better. It's how we come together. The trying times that the former mayor talked about in Jennings and I was discussed earlier, uh, I'm proud of the relationship that uh, my current department has uh, built with the community. Um, one of the first things I did do when I, when I took the accepted position as, as Chief of Police in Jennings was to meet with the ministers. Because the ministers are a, a good gauge for the congregation of people that express their concerns and, and you know, really uh, letting their, their pastors know what's going on around them. 
and uh, it was an opportunity that uh, meeting with the ministers and, and knowing where the community was at the time to how do we address or how do I address that concern within a department in Jennings. Obviously there I took over a department that was already working. So it was some transitional stuff that had to be, had to be done. I can tell you that uh, after the first year that I was in office uh, in 2012, Jennings was, uh, according to uh, crime stats, the safest city in Louisiana. So we have not regressed. Uh, we've only uh, increased our relationship with the community to continue to better it and serve it on the crime on the crime side. Uh, we did put a lot did put a lot of uh, emphasis on community projects. I felt that I still feel that our children is where we need to put our concerns because they are going to grow and to be our future leaders. So if we can be a positive influence on those children, on our children, then we can take our city into a, a brand new direction of positive, of giving them opportunities, giving our children opportunities to, to succeed and stay here in New Iberia and not move away and find success somewhere else. That's what we try to do and in, still in Jennings is to keep our young younger adults to uh, stay in Jennings and bring that prosper and that opportunity there. Um, I can tell you that our crime stats this year, and I produced those to the media uh, on, in July, and, and as it's gone on, uh, the crime stats in Jennings are the best that I have ever seen since I've been chief. So if we're not number one, we'll be in the top three of safest cities again. So it is successful what we have instilled in our department to serve our community. You know, one thing that our officers do, and I can tell you that another thing that, that I instill is accountability within a department. A lot of people feel concerned that what if an officer does bad things or does things. That's an individual act. We take that, I take that into consideration because I hold a strong hand on accountability. I love every officer that works in Jennings, but they know that they're expected to work at the highest standard because the community deserves it. You deserve it because the crime that you're suffering here and, and are exposed to here and putting the residents here in Iberia in harm's way need to work together to uh, where we can quell that down. And that's building that trust with the community. And that's what I'm, I'm going to bring to this city and, and uh, I'm going to work every day and, and no one owes me anything, no one owes me trust. So I have to earn it from you and from the citizens here in Iberia every day. And that's going to be my that's going to be my task is to go out every day, and prove to you that that you can trust what we're going to do is going to do the right thing and be fair because it, it was mentioned about uh, fairness, and it, it needs to be fair. Public safety comes paramount. Keeping people safe in their homes and not being fearful to walk outside is paramount. That's what needs to happen, in a relationship that our offices have or are going to have with our community is paramount to that relationship to keep that keep the public safe. So those are the kind of things that I believe in. I believe that our officers need to be involved and uh, I'm happy to see that that uh, member of our uh, audience tonight is someone that I coached at, uh, years ago. Um, I've always felt that our police officers need to do more than just policing. Uh, through my years when I graduated high school I started coaching Little League, Little League Baseball became a police officer and stayed coaching Little League sports. I coach baseball, coach basketball, coach football, and our youth. Our officers have to be seen more than just the policeman that puts you in jail. Is the policeman that's also my coach. He's also the one that's instilling that, that it, there's a bond there that says that that young man or young adult or young, young lady can come to him if they have a problem. You know, one thing that's one of my pet peeves is that when someone sees a policeman walk into a room and their child may be misbehaving or something, they say, well, you better stop that. That policeman's going to put you in jail. It should be furthest from what that conversation is because if that child gets lost from you, you should seek out that policeman to bring you back and reunite you with your family. That policeman needs to be someone that you go to, that your child feels comfortable going to, and knowing that they'll, fe they'll be safe when that, when that happens. That policeman will keep that child safe. So. A lot of my emphasis goes on our youth because I believe that that's going to lead us to our future and also to start dealing with getting the community's trust with the department we're going to build and, and having our officers go out and serve the community and get to know the community. I agree with the because one of the things that, uh, that I was getting ready to do in Jennings before this opportunity came about uh, was to do a walk in the city 
throughout the city. No, no picking on a, a, a neighborhood that may have more crime than others to go everywhere and to find out what those concerns may be. Because in one neighborhood it may be speeding, one neighborhood it may be loud music, another neighborhood it may be more major crime. You know, it's identifying those things so we can, so we can send our, our officers to go out and serve those needs. What are those needs? We need to identify those things and, and be able to serve those needs and know what the emphasis needs to be. And that's the only way you can do that is to learn your community. So I can talk a lot more, but I know that uh, I'm understanding there'll be questions. So I want to be able to answer your questions for me. And uh, so I'll open the floor to that if that's okay, Mr. Mayor. That's fine. That's great. Y'all want to go around the table or one at a time? Does everybody have questions? Okay. Um, all right. Which side do you want to start? I'll start. I'll start. Okay. Um, all right. How you doing, man? I'm all in Lewis. City Cosmo District 2, um, where most of the crime is happening. Uh, and I got I got a, a, a definition. I don't I haven't defined that word crime yet because uh, there's a lot of gun violence and there's a lot of gun shooting. And crime is also stealing and uh, kidnapping and all kinds of crime is a lot of things. One of the things that um, concerns me in my district is the gun violence. Uh, biggest issue is that we have so many guns on, and I'm assuming they're hot guns, and I'm assuming most of them are owned by or occupied by felons. And you know, one of the questions that I would have is that how would you address that issue? I mean, uh, you know, if you were a general in the United States Army and you had to go in Iraq and get guns from terrorists, then you have a plan uh, of action, and it's probably going to be uh, go in there, kill them all, and take guns. <laughs> but you can't do that in a community like the West End or even Antry community or any other community where gun violence is um, at a high rate. So do you have a plan to address the issues that we're facing right now with gun violence? I don't even like to call gun violence crime. I like to call it a stupidity because owning a gun is not a crime, but being violent, what a gun is. So how do you, uh, you know, intent to address that well and, and that that's a good question and, and some of the things that the community gens I realized that it's a third the size of Iberia but it's still the same problems on a smaller scale which still deals with that type of issue which is gun violence and, and guns in the wrong hands you know there's nothing wrong with owning a gun just if you use the gun the wrong way that's where it becomes an issue well that's where the relationship we're going to build with the community to, to get the information that's, that's necessary for our officers and our investigative teams to go across and, uh, and get those guns, get the guns that are being used to commit crimes or the felons that may be in possession of. So to answer that is, is that one of the biggest things is our department's going to have integrity. So the trust is what we're going to work on every day. Mm -hmm. So we're going what, what my plan is is to go in and do what similar to what we did in Jennings is to go in and talk to the people in the community see where the issues are taking place identify those areas and then that's where you set up some investigative teams to come in and address the concern on the investigative side I agree with you it's not the military where you can just go in and just kick a door and say hey that's you need to have you need to do it the right way because the, the one thing that, that I've learned in my years, and I've worked investigations for a long time also, is that if, if you do it the right way, even, even that, that criminal element will respect you for it. If you do it the wrong way, that, that criminal element will not respect you for it. It'll become a clash of who can do more bad things. So my way is, is my philosophy is to go in and do it the right way, establish and get the information. We're gonna establish a tips line because that's been extremely successful for us in Jennings. Our tips line rings all the time, and I have a person that answers that tips line. It doesn't go to a recording. My plan is to do the same thing here. That way, if, and, and it got mentioned earlier about uh, a phone call could have could have, could have, or had, had been made prior to something happening. Well, we want to make sure that we get that information and we put somebody out to, to deal with that information directly before it happens. We don't need to be a reactive agency. We are a proactive agency. Stop a crime before the crime takes place. So my plan is, is one, uh, uh, take a look at what, the, what those issues are in your district, and speaking with you, look at the issues are in your district, talk with you, identify what, what those areas are, and then set out an investigative plan on that, and do it the right way. And 
it, 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 it will work out. It, it is successful. It's not a matter of being a military police. That's not what we are. We need to do it. We need to do it the right way to make sure that what information that our department sends up to the district attorney is can, can hold these people accountable for what they're doing. Taking young lives should never happen. Taking older lives should never happen. Taking anybody's life should never happen. So we want to make sure that we address that prior to that happening. You know, I, I think that we've been, and I'm going to resort back to where uh, my, my successes have come in through Jennings, is that we've addressed that. We have zero homicides in Jennings this year. You know, and, and it's attributed to the fact that our officers are extremely visible. That's another plan that I have also to address that concern, is you're going to see our policemen. They're going to be there. We're going to establish our cars. Our cars, our plans are to have GPSs in our cars to make sure we know where our cars are. If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, that's where I come in. That's to make sure that accountability is held and our police officers are patrolling our neighborhoods. We're not going to send every police car to one neighborhood. We want to protect this entire city. We want to make sure that everybody's safe. But we want to concentrate our efforts on being proactive in areas where more violent crimes are taking place. So I hope that answers your question. Feel calmed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Looking forward to looking yeah. forward to uh, seeing you put those efforts into effect. And I know it's going to take time. I know it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, we're starting with nothing, so um, you know, and you do bring a lot to the table. So uh, you know, we have to trust somebody. You know, and, uh, from what I've heard so far and what I've read uh, so so far. Uh, I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Mr. B. Juveniles. Very big portion of our crime in your That's right. We've caught them personally and hand them to the police. That's right. And nothing gets done. No mm. reports back. Mm. Nothing gets done. They're too young. We have no place to go punish them. Do you have any kind of, that's one big question, do we have any kind of way we can, we see them all over other towns, trash pick up. Hours of time they can do things. There's something they can do to get their crime under control of these juveniles doing a lot of this crime. Are you, is your office gonna be open door where some of us can come talk, uh, uh, you know, and talk it out? I find juveniles a big, big portion of this crime, and we've tried to help it. And man, that we 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 don't know where to turn them. More that we turn them in, we catch them, eight of them at a time in my backyard. <laughs> you know, and they call and they just laugh it off, and they're too young. You know, we have to have a place where we can catch them and do, and not just let them go that night with them over a bunch. Of them. Uh, to answer your question, uh, the, the things you're talking about reforming our juvenile system is a whole different arena. And uh, that, that is obviously, with your judicial system, that's where it goes to that level. Our judges and juvenile judges and, and judges are going to decide whether they're to pick up trash and those types of reforms there. Uh, it's unfortunate that everyone is dealing with juvenile crime. We're dealing with it in Jennings, too. We've picked up a group of about six of them that had committed in a rash of vehicle burglaries and, and we've re-picked them up a few times. Now, fortunately that we've been consistent enough, uh, our investigators and our patrol officers have done a fantastic job of, like you said, catching them. And we've put in the pressure on the juvenile system to say that it's continuous and they're escalating their types of crimes. It's escalating. And we've had them, four of the six, sent off uh, for a year. So it, it you find that it's stressful for, because that first arrest where it's not, not a violent crime, they're going to get a, a release, and that's a frustration when you see that child back on the street again. It's the consistency of the department that's going to dictate the consequences at the end of it. It's to be consistent, because if there's a, a young a juvenile, like you described, a young adult that's making poor choices and escalating the types of crimes that they're doing, it's to stay consistent and be on top of that to know what we're presenting to the juvenile system. Not, not as calm as Mr. Marlin was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you can keep that in your mind of what we can do. Okay. But some of them will be across your desk, I'm sure. No problem. Appreciate it. Beverly Jones. Yes, Todd, you know, it's pretty impressive when your application and your 
recommendations is four times thicker than our, our meeting. This <laughs> is a lot. And, um, you know, uh, I, I did talk to a few people that was in here that recommended you, and it's just, I'm scared. I'm scared you're so good that someone's going to steal from you. Steal us. We might have to make him the chief and sign a document where he can't leave New Iberia. Because nothing but positive, honestly. And when you start positive at the top, it goes to, down to the bottom. And I think we're very lucky to have the, the person as yourself with the experience you have. It's, it's just remarkable when you read everything that's in this packet. I mean, it's like... Uh, it's, we're blessed, and um, one thing good about it, we got another family might be moving back to New Iberia, so you know, so well, it's a win-win. And uh, you're not driving from Jennings every day. Right? No, I'm not driving from Jennings every day. <laughs> <Good morning spot. laughs> but uh, we welcome you, and and, and Chief, I know it's gonna be a, a, a rough uh, few months before we get it going, but I think we have the confidence, and you got the, of course, the uh, the city behind you, the uh, the people, the citizens. They want to change, and I think um, you'll be the leader. I think it's a, it's a privilege to have you here. You're not gonna lie. You well, know, we're looking forward to working with you. I appreciate it, and and you know, and I'm humbled by your words. And I, I never consider myself. And one one of the the, I guess out of the recommendations and and the people that have spoken on my behalf, um, I, I said it when I went and took the job in Jennings, that I don't seek a title. I always believe that the police chief is an office of for you, the people. I'm your police chief if voted on tonight, and just like I am Jennings' police chief, and reading some of those letters that I have gotten a copy of, when and I'm described when when the people of Jennings describe me as their police chief, that's what I work for. You know, I, I don't work for the title to be the police chief or the chief of police. That's not what it's about. It's about serving. Uh, I've been blessed in my life, and, and I've always worked to achieve goals, but it's it's never to be described by a title, and it comes along with it, but I, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your police chief. I'm the community's police chief, just like I'm the community of Jennings' police chief at this point. So, you know, I, I, I'm, where, where I really get humbled is, is, is when the people that I serve describe me as their police chief, as our police chief, and that's what I work for. So I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Okay, in my district, <laughs> we, we have a few um, car burglaries, um, you know, uh, home burglaries, um, disturbing the peace, but there are a lot of businesses in my district on Lewis Street, um, in that general area, uh, there are a lot of businesses, and we are having some difficulties with break-ins. So how are you going to address uh, the corner, the store at the corner by my house has, since it's a new ownership, mm. it's been broken into numerous times? Yes, great question. And uh, it, it is something that I implemented when I became police chief in Jennings, and I'm sure the former mayor said the phone calls, he's gotten the compliments for it. Uh, what, what, what we get is business check cards. Our officers under my mandate are required to do five business checks a night per shift or per day per shift every officer so they will see those cards in their door at one two three in the morning when that police officer is checking their business to make sure that it's not being broken into the second part of that of what it does is it puts uh, it lets the the ones that are trying to decide whether they want to break into that business or not to know that a policeman is there and he checks regularly not just <coughs> once a week not just once a month He's checking every day on that on those businesses in that in that uh, in this city. I expect every business in this city to be checked every day. Now, obviously, calls are going to dictate that if a, a batch of car, uh, calls take place and it pulls police officers from being able to do it routinely on, on any given night because of a crime issue, but they are required, and I will require the same thing here that each officer checks businesses every shift requirement. And that's how we will address that because it will bring visibility to, that, to those businesses and also bring someone checking the doors and windows to make sure it's not broken into and check suspicious activity. And um, we also have uh, a few problems with speeding. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do about speeding? And nobody's gotten a ticket in forever, I don't think, in New Iberia for well, speeding. <laughs> um, the, the public's not going to probably like to hear that they will be writing tickets, but, you know, it's something that the mayor and I have had discussed, and obviously you need to hold 
because when your traffic starts running rampant, you deal with a high volume of crashes, a high volume of incidents, and you need to have enforcement to let people know that there is enforcement out there. We do plan on doing traffic control, um, and we do we will look at the areas where people do cut across us. We have those in Jennings where someone tries to cut the main drag to beat the next car ahead of them and cut across neighborhoods where there's children at play. Uh, we're going to work those areas and make sure it's kind of like what I talked about with the, uh, you know, getting to know what the concerns are in each district, each neighborhood. It might be speeding, it might be loud music, it might be burglaries, it might be something else. And we're going to make sure that we give the emphasis of what those concerns are. So we do plan on, on having an effective traffic division and we will work traffic on a daily basis. have said from Jennings uh, and, and I like everything that I've heard. Thank you for wanting to really undertake this because I know, you know, you know we have problems and you're building from the bottom up. So this will definitely be your baby. So if there's any anything goes wrong, we hold in you Absolutely. What we're supposed to do. Absolutely. And and so you know, and I know that he asked earlier about whether I'm Jennings. I, I'm I'm originally from here. Uh, my my mother's in the crowd tonight, okay. and uh, you know, so we're I, I'm I grew up. I graduated from St. Martinville High, and and uh, on weekends, obviously, there was nothing to do in St. Martinville, so we came in New Iberia, went to the park, and and uh, you know, so. St. Marble, New Iberia, I've always considered to be the same town in a sense. It's just kind of an overgrowth of it. But uh, so I understand the dynamics in New Iberia and I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Gidry. Um, I want to thank um, Mr. Delvar for coming tonight and introducing himself uh, and the people that came to support him. It seems as though um, he's a great person um, and uh, we are all here. Uh, but we are all hearing it for the first time tonight. However, I have a great concern before me, Mr. Todd. Um, I can't, I don't know uh, until you finish ask, 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 you know, answering some of these questions that I have and maybe the rest of the council um, before I can make an informed decision. Um, however, um, um, I need to be true to the constituents that I represent. I have not had an opportunity until tonight at this podium to meet you. I'm not happy about that. Um, um, I'd like to hear, you know, um, your vision um, more on community <coughs> policing, your philosophies and values and beliefs. Um, basically speaking, you will be the head govern, uh, governing body um, over this city. And so, biblically, whatever is on the body, I'm sorry, whatever is on the head trickles down to the body, meaning your police officers. So, um, you, have, uh, com you have complete control over the decision-making process from henceforth. So, this is my only opportunity to, on behalf of my constituents, to ensure that we're putting the correct person um, to make the right decisions. Um, I went out and solicited, along with the mayor and this council, financial support from our citizens with the vision of the community. Uh, and we put out uh, about community policing. And I want to be a good steward um, over that hard, those hard earned dollars. And if you ask me today, tomorrow, or yesterday if I would support the tax, I'd do it all over again because we need something new and fresh for our citizens. Um, we're taking the first step tonight, but yet we have not had an opportunity or, no in, or any input from the community during this selection process, okay? Just like you're purchasing an, a car. Um, the salesman always tell you that it's a great deal and uh, it's a great car. You ever bought a car before? Yes, I did. Okay, and you take the, you take ownership of that car, right? And then you turn the key and find out there's no motor in the car, okay? The salesman didn't lie, you know, he, he, he just left out some pertinent information. You agree? Yes. Okay, so no disrespect to you, sir. Um, 
but I don't want to have I don't have a good feeling about this um, when it comes down to um, the resources that was available to us in soliciting um, every resource available possible for this important position. Um, yet, to be frank, in my district, where some of the crime is occurring as well on the border of District 2 and District 5, and I represent District 5, okay? Um, so the relationship with, um, with these people um, in, in, in those two districts and the whole city is going to be more sensitive than other areas uh, of, the, of, of many districts. And if you don't mind, I would like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay with you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you, so can you give me mo uh, a little bit more on your definition on what it means to you for community policing? And I heard uh, quite a, some great things from you, um, but if you can go a little bit more in depth concerning community policing and um, with the domestic terrorism that's going on in our city, how do you plan to structure and implement community policing and getting the support of the people concisely behind you? that's part of the major problem we're having right now. Yeah, and, and it's uh, like I said at the very beginning that uh, trust is not something that that uh, that we're given. This trust we got to earn. Yes, so to answer that question is is that you got to engage the community and listen to the concerns and not just uh, drive by those concerns or just let it go in one ear and out the other. In, in layman's terms, it, it's to be able to engage the community and hear what the concerns are. And then that's where, as me and Mr. Marlin, Mr. Lewis spoke, is that you, you want to devise a plan. If there <coughs> is some major crimes going on in a certain block or a certain area in your district, then we want to be able to address that and send out an investigative team to address that concern and do it the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I don't believe in is just sending police out there to just show force. I don't believe in that. I believe that you can engage a community mm -hmm. and learn, earn its trust and get the information that's necessary to go after the elements that's committing crime. And that's what's been successful for during my tenure of, of in Jennings and in other places where I've worked is that you engage that, you get the information necessary, and you deal with that issue. On a community policing, that's all a part of community policing is to be, is to be able to engage the community on the aspects of what their concerns are. And again, every district is going to have, and even every block is going to have a different issue, a different concern from another. Um, it's going to have a different concern than another. So we want to be able to identify those things. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, after reviewing your uh, resume, can you explain to me your level of commitment to the city of New Iberia because your resume, which is outstanding, but it reflects short-term commitments from city to city. So can you tell me a little bit about um, how do you plan on your level of commitment to the city of New Iberia, you know, so we can all feel comfortable mm -hmm with you as our police chief and you won't take out running on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I was in Gen Jennings for over seven years, so it's not a short-term commitment I made to Jennings. And but at the time, at the time, mm -hmm. right. And before that, it, it's a level of, of going to different departments and getting more experience, providing what I felt was uh, what, what I brought to the table for each department to better it and better the situation in the communities I worked in. And then other opportunities came about. Yeah. And I understand you're concerned what happens if another opportunity comes about. Well, I'm moving back here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is home for me. So I have no plans. I, I'm, I'm getting at a point where uh, I'm getting older. I'm not old by any means. Uh, but I'm getting older, and this, this is my forever. My, my family is here. Uh, again, I spoke. My mother's in the crowd. My sister and my brother-in-law in the crowd tonight. My, unfortunately, my wife couldn't make it. My youngest son is sick. So she had to be at home and, and, and uh, take care of him. But... Um, so this this will be my forever home. I'm coming back home to stay. I have family land that that I'm on, and and uh, you know I plan on being here. I don't plan on going anywhere. Now remember, you have that on record now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Some of the people that um, some some of our people in the city have some mental issues. Um, if you look back, um, there was a recent issue in the news where a mother called a the police on her son told him that they had mental issues and when the police showed up you know they shot him on the spot um what do you you know um for the mental issues in our community our person seems to be a bit challenging um do you have a compassionate approach to deal with the sensitive issues 
and have you ever had training for the for such for the such? Yes, um, we, we do yearly training. We bring in mental health experts. Uh, we have a local uh, clinic that actually I spoke with two weeks ago, and they're going to come in and, and do a training with our officers. Because our training, I, sir. Uh, on what mental health, called? on on well, what it would they deal with? They're an in, an inpatient and outpatient mental health facility. They deal with a variety of different uh, <coughs> diagnoses. So what they do is is that how to identify uh, even someone with because uh, I have a son with autism. So how to identify certain things and deal with that issue because that's a separate training on its own. But uh, we do a variety of training when it involves people that have challenges mentally. Um, we deal with it in Jennings, and every community is dealing with it, um, you know, and, and it, it, it further gets heightened because your drug epidemic is really heightened with, uh, you got a fentanyl problem going on right now throughout this country and throughout this state and area. Uh, heroin has hit us in Jennings along with Lafayette and other areas. I'm sure it's here too. Um, so th these drugs are, are leading people with mental health challenges to escalate their, their mental side. So to answer your question, my compassionate side is, is that one, someone that, that is in a mental state or in a state of uh, not, not understanding, it's extremely difficult. Uh, that's, that's where the training that, that we receive, our officers are going to receive, because we're going to set that up. It's going to be a continuous training, because under... And again, sir, what is the name of that training? Do you, do you well, it, it, it's done by a comprehensive clinic that they are mental health professionals. I, I'm, I'm, it's not a state mandated training. We do it on our own. What it is is that there is a local clinic in Jennings that provides mental health inpatient services and outpatient services. Those mental health professionals come in and train our people of how to identify different ailments and how to de-escalate those moments. So are you familiar with uh, sensitivity training or cultural awareness training that is required by police officers? Um, I, that's why I asked you the question, you know, and I, and I asked you several times, what is the name of that training? And you kept telling me about the mental health experts and the inpatient and outpatient, and those are all three things because the officers do need those types of training. But, you know, I have some constituents that have mental issues, mm -hmm. and so again, I want to know if you is familiar with the sensitivity or cultural awareness training that's very important for a police officer, am I right? The, the, the training of, of how to de-escalate someone that has mental issues is extremely important. And yes, we, we seek out people that are licensed professionals in, that, in those fields to come in and do the training. There is no state uh, organization that does it, to answer your question. I think it's where you're going at is there a certain name of a certain group that teaches it. Right now, there is not. So I, I saw it as being the leader of Jennings Police Department, and we'll seek the same thing here, someone that is a licensed professional, an organization that treats people with mental illnesses, because I can't understand, I'm, I'm not a licensed mental health expert. Right. I don't have a license to do it, so I don't want to be able to go out and train. I want people that, that understand and have a license to do it, understanding to do it, to train our people to understand how to de-escalate those situations. And so you have, so you've taken the sensitivity and cultural awareness uh, training. Well, the, the cultural awareness diversity training is separate from mental health. Right. I have an instructor within my department that teaches, that is a, a certified instructor, went through an instructor's course, yes, and he teaches in-house to my personnel. That officer is trained as an instructor he in diversity. Ma'am? He teaches what, sir? Diversity. Diversity. Yes. So cultural awareness. Coach, yes. Okay. And what are your strategies in a general sense? Um, do you plan to implement or um, ex um, exacerbate crime in hot spots or secure our city from discord and unrest? Um, and reduce the spirit of fear uh, that is gripping our constituents at this point. Uh, again, we're, we're going to engage our community to build a relationship of trust. Yes, sir. We're going to listen to the, the concerns and gather information. We're going to set up a tips line to make sure that even if someone doesn't want to give their name and give an anonymity there, that there'll be a tips line to do that so we can be proactive and not reactive. So, the so that's tips, the plan. So to, the to tips line, you, um, you're talking about the 364 tips. Are you going to tie into that that's already set up as I, well? I'm not familiar with, with the, I think it's a Crime Stoppers it's uh, Crime line. Crime Stoppers 364 tips. Right. That, that, that is done through the Sheriff's Office. Yes. I plan on setting up our own tips line. Mm -hmm. So we plan. I plan on setting up our own. So it's going to be separate from, so from Iberia Parish. Right. Iberia 
parish is going to maintain their tips. If there is information from a, from any uh, Crime Stoppers, yes, they provide information to any municipality. Because if even if St. Martin Parish receives a tip on their Crime Stoppers, they're going to they would call my jurisdiction if it deals with mine. So the sheriff's office will still provide that information through any tip through the Crime Stoppers to our department. Okay. So, but I plan on setting up our own, so that way there'll be a direct line because I want somebody to answer that line. Okay. So. Um, I did do the stats on Jennings and um, also the population, and uh, Ms. Robbie is correct. Um, it is 10, a little over 10,000 people and uh, 32,000 here, uh, and a little over 32,000 here in New Iberia. And, uh, and I'm just trying to see, you know, if you're familiar with gang violence and if you have some experience or dealt with that recently in a small population of Jennings, um, you know, how do you plan to deal with a lot of the gang violence? I, I call it domestic terrorism, really, basically that's all it is. It's just shooting up people's houses, shooting up the place. So how do you plan to deal with that, sir? Again, we, we're going to be proactive. We, we're going to. So if I called you and said, this is Councilwoman Guidry, they're shooting up the place and such and such, they got some hot spots, you know, you know, can I get in touch with you? Are mm -hmm. you going to be that accessible? Yes. And we can have some units sitting down for our constituents and people that are sitting there in fear in their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you will find that I, I do have an open door policy. I will continue to have an open door policy, and I do take the calls. And you return calls um, with your policy? I Absolutely. 24 hours, 48 hours? Absolutely. My, my former mayor is right behind me, and he can speak of, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I take the calls. If he got calls, he gave it to me, I make the calls. Okay. Absolutely. All right. That's the end of my questions. Thank okay. you for your patience. I appreciate it. I'm just asking questions that I've been on the phone since 6.30 this morning. My phone has not stopped until I walk into this council chambers. So I want to make sure that I'm properly representing all my constituents but make, before I make a proper decision. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Swear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of comments to make. Um, Good. Got to meet you this evening. Um, you're an outstanding guy. I, I went through your resume. I looked over the past probably about uh, since we received it, a few days, and went through. And, um, you're more qualified to be chief, not just in New Iberia, but in the other community. And we're fortunate to have you come here to New Iberia and take it. You know, to try and take this position and we're thankful of it. So I appreciate you being here tonight and standing up and taking the questions and comments and all those from all of um, You did bring up a few points that, that actually hit hit me personally is uh, when you bring up children, I'm the father of a young child. Um, I myself, I'm not, we're not, my family's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna put my trust in you to bring that, that faith back and that community policing aspect back to, um, to this town. Um, another thing I, um, that's a really big thing for me is ordinance enforcement. I'm sure Mr. Landry is going to be very happy that we have some, some officers on the street to help him out. And I look forward to, for, uh, for you as well as the chief to help him with ordinance enforcement. So that's a big problem we have um, throughout District 6 and also the whole city. I mean, we're battling them every day. So, but once again, I appreciate you coming here. I mean, it, uh, it means a lot. And like Mr. Dahl said, it's another family coming back to town. And I'm sure there's more to follow. And I, like, once again, thank you for being here, and I respect you for that. And I'm looking forward to, to working together and, and getting the city cleaned up. Thank you, Mr. Curtin. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thank you all for all the comments. Can I get one more question? Oh, all right. It's one more question. question. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and, no, and I heard, Sherry, you asked a lot of questions. One question I have is about diversity. Yes. Um, and, and for me, clearly, diversity is a police department that looks like what New Iberia looks like. You know, um, I think one of the problems that we face in, in, in this country, this state, in this area, is that we don't have enough police officers that look like us, that look like me. <laughs> but most of the people that are policing look like me. <laughs> and so that's where we have a disconnect. <laughs> yeah, a little more. Right? <laughs> so how how are you going to go about as chief? Because we understand once we ratify you, you do all the hiring. How are you going to go about recruiting young, qualified African American men to be on the New Iberia City Police Department so we can have some role map models in place within our community? And women. And women. And women. And women. And women. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, on record and women. And, 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 on record and women. And, and, and diversity needs to happen because you, you need to be diverse in, in a community you represent. I absolutely agree with that. I think that Reverend Perkins can attest because I've been at his church a number of times asking him for help in finding minority candidates to come forward. One thing we always do, though, we still want quality people. We're not going to hire anyone because of any race, any creed, or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to hire quality people. But we do want minority candidates so we can represent this community well. I, I have gone, and, and again, I'm picking on Reverend Perkins, and he knows because I've been, I've been with him, and I've done some neighborhood meetings where I encourage our minority community to come forward and apply. I've actually had uh, a young man work for me, an African-American young man work for me, that uh, applied after a community meeting that we held, that I held. So I, I, we need to be diverse. And I will encourage and I will go wherever I need to be to encourage minority candidates to come and apply for our department. Because our department is your department. So I absolutely agree, men and women. <laughs> and uh, so we, we will actively recruit. And we will recruit any and all qualified candidates, but especially minorities. Can I ask we have a few more questions? Uh, Councilman Tweer. I have one more comment. I just want to make it clear with my constituents as well as everyone else. As a council member, we're not here to, we're here for budgetary reasons, and it's the mayor that makes the decision to, to bring you forward. And we're here to look, overlook your resume and look at the person you are. Mm -hmm. We're not here to say, well, you know, we're not making the pick. We're here to ratify you. And that our job is to take care of from here is budgetary and do the day-to-day -day operations of maintaining what's going on on the budgetary side. So I just wanted to reflect on that and make sure everyone knows that it's not the council member's job to do the hiring or other, other, other things. It's not our job. But I just wanted to make that clear with my constituents as district said that we need. So thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Dusty. Um, I want to also make it clear as well that, um, you know, um, that it's important that we go over your qualifications. It's important that we talk about what we're talking about tonight. Um, and, um, you know, I don't ratify anything if I don't believe in it, if I don't know it, if I've never heard of it. You know, I'd like to get to know it a little bit more a little bit more time with it. That's just a principle, um, you know, that I have. And urgency does not equate quality. So I want to make sure that I'm making a quality decision. So um, I, I, I can't speak for my other council members, and I love them, and I work really great with them. But before I can ratify or verify anything, um, it's just a principle that I have. And I would have loved to sit down and had some coffee with you and talk with you and to get a little bit more of your views and, and values and, and what do you, how do you want to, um, you know, go about this city. And um, if you plan on um, going, you know, to the schools and recruiting as well, you know, some of our African-American um, uh, young men and other races as well, because we're a cultural diverse group. We're a, 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 a pot of gumbo. And women. And women. <laughs> 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 women. You know, so, you know, I just want to make that clear. And, and, and I just, I'm just asking the questions that my constituents that put me in this seat. That's what I'm asking. Uh, it, it's my responsibility yeah. to earn my, this community's trust, which yes, includes sir. obviously you as representatives of this community. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I can only go through the process that's in front of me. Yes, so, sir. but I do drink coffee. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? I have a, uh, a comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've asked you a lot of questions and all, and you haven't asked us anything, really. Uh, but I just want you to know that we are here to support you in your endeavors, so uh, feel free to ask us budget questions. You know, if you need a little money here or there, you know, <laughs> make sure that, because <laughs> we're accountable, too. So, mm -hmm. too. Um, spend the money that you know the, the citizens have um, approved for you so please let us know how we can be supportive and that's what we're here for to so support you 
and the support of the police department that we're um, about to embark on. You know, it's going to be new and exciting, and yep. I think we're all excited about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further discussion? <laughs> well, then I will ask for a motion because we didn't do a motion. No, we so did. We, did. we did a motion. We, we had a vote. second. Oh, yes. well, then we just need to vote. Then I will ask you to vote your machines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> We've got one more step and then we were a real department but this was the most important one this lets us have our police department uh, chief and I talked and chief Dalbor will come to work on December the 1st just to let you know uh, so I appreciate it thank you and this was a good discussion next item madam clerk introduction of ordinance to be set for public hearing December 5th 2017 an introduction of budget amendment ordinance Number 2017-2018-02, amending the ordinance levy and certain taxes, appropriating the funds necessary to defray the expenses and liabilities of the City of Nyaduri for the year 2017-2018 to transfer funding from fiscal year 2017-2018 to amend budget for the city's share in excess of capital outlays funds for the Armand Code drainage pump station generator addition project. Can I have a motion? Before before we do that, I'll just let you know, this is, we got a grant to furnish this generator for the Armaco pump station that we desperately need. We have to have a generator. But of course, it didn't meet all the money. So we're asking for $26,000 to go with the money that we are getting for this. But anyway, that way you know what we're, what we're asking about. So can I have a motion? Do have a motion? Motion oh, by? Uh, Councilman Swear had his hand up, and who's that? Oh, Councilwoman Ledbetter. Great. So, we have any discussion on this yeah. item? Yes. Mayor Plotin. It's kind of confusing. That's um, why I brought it up that we needed. It, well, it looks sorry. Well, it looks like it, we have a fund balance of 26,836 still left over in that fund. We do, sir, and we need 465. Okay, but then right here it says um, the bid was right here it says the bid was 60,242. It was a low bid from uh, CDG Energy, right? And then it says estimated engineer fees is 10,000. So the 10,000 has got to be included in the 60,000? Correct. What, what, if you look right here, where as a city share, yeah. the excess in capital so outlay is a 16,5 plus the 10. Okay, but the so total amount is 70,242. Yes, sir. Okay, I want to make yeah. sure that. We, we, we have to pay our engineers. And we. Um, so we are taking the 26,000. You have 500, right? But it's 26836 still in that fund? Or, I mean, yes. It's a couple. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. But there's any reason for us not just drain the fund? No. Well, once we finish the project, we will have no more fund. It will, yeah. it will be drained. Okay. That's on. Yes, sir. So the grant that we were talking about is the 16500 It's our share. It's our share of it. Yes, sir. It's our share. But is that going to be coming from the... Um, that comes from Richard Minville did a grant for us. That okay. comes from the state. So the monies that we're taking is from what's left over in that account, not from the general. I mean, it's from the general, but it's in the Amoco uh, We're taking right from the, we're taking all the money out of the Amoco okay. area, if you will, but yeah, then I have right. to take from the general fund to, to match, to make the match. Okay, so, uh, okay. So uh, when we make the match, then that match is 16,500, correct? Plus the 10,000 for yeah. the engineer. We'll be coming back into the, uh, us to, uh, I mean, it won't come right to that fund. Is it come to our general? Correct. Fund? Correct. And then we have to do another amendment. Uh, no, I think so. Kevin, do you want to approach the podium, please? Oh, that's all being done right now. I, is it all? It's all in one move. We do it this meeting and next meeting, and then the money's moved. Right. right? In this meeting, we're presenting the <clears throat> the amendment, and then the next meeting we vote on it, whether to go in. But what we're doing is, is we're we're moving the money. Well, as as the, the, you adopted a budget. That budget did not have those expenditures in it. Right. So what right. we're doing is we're amending the budget so that these expenditures are in the budget and that they are appropriated and that we can spend them. That's what we're doing. Okay. Then in two more so, meetings, we'll have the money. Yes. After so we're this. putting the expense into the budget. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. We amend the budget now, then we move the money, and it takes two meetings okay. to move the money. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, sir.
the point six five and then the amended into the general fund? Yes. Yeah. Right. See, we didn't have a line item for it. We thought okay. the grant would cover the whole thing. And, you know, yeah. the Ormaco has been built for, for a while. So at the time that it was budgeted, we thought we had enough money. But yeah. that was probably three, almost um, four years ago now. Is this a backup generator? There is no, yes. this is the there generator. Is generator we, we know. We have diesel pumps and electric pumps, and we need a generator. They did the project with no generator. And they did the project with no backup generator, which for really, hurricane. for a hurricane, which really didn't make a lot of change. So we, we have to do this. Okay. You know what we could do, though? Since the, uh, the mayor, uh, since the parish helped us with part of the funding, maybe they helped us part of the generator. <laughs> I've got some parish councilman people here, you know. Well can always wish, Mayor. We, well, you know, and look, we get along and we do great <laughs> things together, but uh, I think we need to pay for our generator. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? If you would please vote your machines. <laughs> that was funny. Thank you all very much. Madam Clerk. Resolutions resolution in support of a grant application to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries through the Clean Vessel Grant Program funds for assistance in implementation of a marine sanitation facility project. Great. And uh, Paul Allen is here to talk to us about it. Um, I wanted to remind the council that um, there are several applications that have come forth before and presented, not to, to have you confused, but You've already, uh, we've already applied for through the U.S. Wildlife and Fisheries and the State of Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries uh, two major applications. One is called the City Slips Waterfront Development, which is located uh, next to the George R. Green Park. And the other one is the Civic Center Marina, uh, which is located behind City Hall. Uh, as a recommendation of the State of Louisiana, uh, our contact person, um, Ms. 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 Melissa Krantz, recommended uh, on, when we applied for that application to pull out what's called the CVA system, which is called a Clean Vessel Act system. Uh, the Wildlife and Fisheries, through the Wild Blow Fund, allows for uh, municipalities to apply for funding uh, through the Clean Water Act to be able to um, ask for these systems to be installed. Fortunately, as a requirement of the first two applications I told you about, a CVA system is required. Uh, we presently have a CVA system behind my office, which we're going to donate to the city of New Iberia uh, it, it, for a relocation to the marina behind City Hall. There's nothing wrong with the system. We just have some other plans in the future. It's perfectly operational, uh, and it values at least $190,000. Right. It's a good system. So what we're applying for through the uh, state... Uh, wildlife and fisheries is the monies to be able to relocate the facility and connect it to the municipal system that's required by the grant. Um, and so the application value at this time, and we're in the process because the application is due on December the 1st, uh, the deadline for that application. Uh, both Jane and, and Vince Palumbo and I, uh, along with Freddie, have been working out the details with respect to exactly what's required for the system relocation. Presently, we have a value of $67,000, which is part of the definition of the resolution uh, that's in front of you, and uh, in-kind service a requirement of $16,750, which is 25% of the match. We feel, uh, based upon those values, that we can actually, uh, through, through Vince's department, be able to provide the services that are required, including the electrical and the sanitary system for that value. So we're actually, we're actually gonna probably have the city cover the in-kind cost uh, for the project. So um, this is a continuation of the development of, the, of that particular project. Uh, it's an opportunity for the city to be able to receive the two major grants in front of them and at the same time receive the CVA donation. So um, I want to see if there's any questions that you might have about this proposal or this grant application, and um, I'm available to answer them. Anybody have any questions? Yes. What's the, for this particular grant, what's, what's the match? The match amount yes, is 25% is of the $67,000, so it's 
And as I said before, Dustin, we feel like uh, between what the city can provide, you have a lift station sitting right here. The location of the CVA is right over the corner of the property. We think that, that by the time that service is brought there with the city systems available and, and workforce, that that will probably meet the, the, the match requirement. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anybody have any questions? Great. Well, then I need, we didn't do a motion yet, so I wanted you to understand. So we'll need a motion. Motion by Council Member Swear, second by, I think Dan beat you on that one. Uh, Mayor Pro Tim Dahl. Uh, any further discussion? Please vote your machines. Great. Thank you all. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Okay. 8B, Madam Clerk. Resolution committing additional local funds required for the city share in excess of capital ILA funds for the Army Code drainage pump station generated addition project. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion second. by Councilman Lewis and a second by Councilman Broussard. And as you know, we just had a big discussion on this. This is the first step, and then we go to the next meeting. So, any further discussion? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Great. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a financial report. Kevin? Evening, everyone. Can, can you give us some good news? <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we start, can I clarify the $2,100 for the storage? What it is is we're not moving that front between funds. It is similar. It's just like the um, 26.5. What we're doing is we're putting a <clears throat> expense on the budget so that you can vote on it and that it can be appropriated. So you had asked for it to be replaced. Uh, what we can do is, every day is we can try to cut another $2,100 of expenses so that we don't move our general fund any lower. But as for repaying, it, it's not a movement, it's not a loan. It's just an additional expense that we're adding to the budget. Well, my question. Well, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. My question was to the mayor when we decided to start the police department. Any funding that would be used from our general fund would be replaced with the tax dollars or the bonds that was dedicated for the city police. Yeah, that's, so if, that's, I, if I came out with something out of the police budget of 2100 bucks and put it in the general fund, I could move it from the police budget to the general fund, couldn't I? We could, but I think right now the storage is going to admin costs because that but it's not is, just police that's the other no, problem it's is not. that it's every so department. it's going it's it's not hitting the police budget it's hitting the admin fund for storage the admin department storage because it, it includes finance records admin record public works records wastewater records but if the police department was not coming downstairs we wouldn't be getting this building true okay True. Whatever. It's just 2100. I'm just. No, we can. We'll, we'll figure out. We'll figure out a way to do it. We can. That's we can figure out a way. If I got to take it out of each budget from each department to make it work, uh, we'll but we'll figure it out. Yeah. I don't okay. see why I can't shift it from one to the other. No well, well, we are, but I okay. just want to make sure that the, the I understand. council knew. But they, it they asked me to pay it back. I'm gonna pay it back. Okay. They uh, good to me. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm good to them, so we'll, okay. we'll figure out a way to do it. I'm going to ask the um, council if we can maybe change the way I presented it in the past so that we can possibly get y'all out here a little quicker. So instead of doing line by line, I'll do the, um, the, the fun by fun. Okay. Are y'all okay. okay with that? Yeah. So if they have if, questions, they're going to hit you. Let's try. Oh, I'm sure they will. All right. So the general fund, we are, we spent 11, 6, I mean, we received... 11,609,000 and we had budgeted 15,257,000 so we have met 76.09% of the budgeted revenue on the general fund and for 10 months we should have been at 83%. <clears throat> on the expense side we budgeted 15,978 in expenses but we we spent 12,105,000 for a 75% 0.76% of the budget. So we are low on revenue, but we're also low on our expenses. Oh, expenses. Yeah. Parks and Recreation was budgeted 995,000. We spent 887,000 for an 89% of the budget. For, I mean, revenue, I'm sorry. 
for expenses, we budgeted $1.2 million, and we have spent $977,000 for 77% of our budget. Public works, we had budgeted a revenue of $2,500,000, and we've spent $1.7 million for 65.62% of the budget. For expenses, we budgeted $3,116,000, and we spent two million one hundred and nineteen, so we have spent seventy one point two two percent of the budget. Sales tax fund, we had budgeted to receive eight million seventy six thousand, and we have received six million eight hundred and eighteen thousand for eighty four point forty three percent of the budget. We budgeted eight million six hundred and thirty five thousand for revenue. We have, I mean, for expenses and we have spent $6,491,000 for 75.17% of the budget. Garbage fund, we had budgeted to receive $4,431,000. We received $3,604,000. We had budgeted to spend $4,439,000, and we have spent $3,699,000 for 83.34% of the budget. Section 8 vouchers, we had budgeted to receive $1,284,000, and we received $1,076,000 for 83.78% of our, or 77% of our budget. For expenses, we had budgeted $1,295,000, we have received, or expent $1,069,000 for 82.52% of our budget. Wastewater was budgeted to receive $5,318,000. We have received $4,181,000 for 78.62% of our budget. Expenses, we budgeted $4,664,000, and we have spent $3,261,000 for 69.92% of our budget. Do we have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Great. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Mm. All right. Let me go to Mr. Broussard. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number 10. Items for discussion. Uh, Mr. David Broussard with a re report on drainage in his district. On November 14, 2017, Tuesday night at the Halliburton building where we have our neighborhood watch meetings, Warren Gosher staff from the parish called the uh, to order and in a government yeah. meeting concerning yeah, consistent of no, no, Iberia Parish government and the city of Iberia to discuss installing very important culverts to drain the ditch running along city line that drains Southwood Park subdivision Broadwood Drive. Parish officials attending this very important meeting was Larry Richard. Parish President Scott Sonier, CEO under Larry Short, Herman Broussard, Public Works Director, Warren Gosser, Sam Parish Councilman, David Broussard, City Councilman of my district. This meeting was held to discuss flooding issues along Broward Drive and all of Southwood Park subdivision. Three weeks ago, there was a rain event which over seven inches of rain, the water backed up on Broward Drive to the highest level I have seen living in AO2 Broward Drive in over 25 years. That's all. We on a high lot. It come a foot from the door. And it went three blocks down the road, two foot in front of the yards. The parish officials present explained to over 30 residents from Southwood Park subdivision, their intent to change culverts to enhance of the ditch of flow to the commercial canal. This ditch runs in back of homes along Broward that borders Parish Line. This is an intergovernment issue. Both parties work together. During the meeting, questions came up and put me on the spot as the city councilman in the, in the room. Why is 
the water not flowing out of Broward and hired in the water in the ditch. Well, Miss Sherry, you have said, and when law enforcement issues come up, you never served the law enforcement. It's not your job, you know, to do all the work on that. Well, I'm not the engineer. I'm not an engineer. I'm not qualified to give the answers to them, so I, I looked pretty rough that night about trying to give answers on that, you know. So, uh, in a nice way, Mr. Mayor, please let Leroy come explain maybe some full, more details of exactly what, what pipes, mainly the two pipes that drain from Broward to the ditch in the back. That's our main problem. The people of that area wanted to hear why is not the water not draining to the ditch in the back. But I, I, don't, I don't know everything they have, so if you don't mind, Leroy, please come explain. And I know the last week or so y'all been really heavy, Mr. Mayor, yes. opinion the ditches out. But we need to know the history, if it's big enough. If they have to have a line flowing for miles straight to the ditch, do so. I'm the lowest spot in the whole neighborhood. You know, get the water out of there. Yes, sir. So we thank you, Mr. Mayor, but please Not a problem. Mr. Leroy is on vacation, oh. and he had that scheduled, but I talked to him before, and I got you some answers. Okay. All right, we had a rain event, and it was 7.1 inches in six hours. But the other problem is we had a high tide that was 2.8 above normal. So as we talk about often, the commercial canal is tidal. When all of your subdivision drains, there are areas that the water can't go. I don't think you look rough, Mr. Broussard, because you were there representing your district. You called me the next morning, and what did we do? And we did that together. We got city crews to go out the next day. I mean, that's about as good service as you can give you people. We got the crews out the next day, and we cleaned and recleaned every drain. Remember now, we have a computer program that our IT guy, Mr. Chuck, wrote for us and it tracks every one of the 1500 drains we have in the city so we could easily see when the drains have been cleaned last we hurried up we got out there we cleaned all the drains this is a total system it's been in place your subdivisions how old mr broussard probably 50 years old those pipes have been there draining that subdivision for over 50 years we know every pipe's clean we watch the parish and we know how much y'all have been putting into cleaning all of the outfalls and y'all have been doing a great job. There's things that are being cleaned and haven't been cleaned in 20 years. I'm telling you that I really feel with the work that's happened on the commercial and the work that's happening now, plus the work that's proposed for, by the parish to do on this parish ditch. I will tell you it is a parish ditch, but we're in this together. You know, all that water got to go. All of our water in the city drains out into the parish, so we have to work together. I am confident, and Leroy is too, that once that, the work that the parish has proposed to do on that ditch in the back, between that and the system we have in place, we're going to be fine. Now, if we see we're not, and we would need to add some, I mean, the good thing is no water got in any houses, which is awesome, but I know the water did come up, at, and it was alarming. However, like I said, we had a seven-inch rain in six hours and a very high tide. So we're working together, we're committed to work together. Mr. Broussard, I'm sure if it is one drop high or one thing happens, I'm gonna hear about it. And that's your job, that's what you're supposed to do. We work well with Paul, we work well with Warren. I know that this is uh, Councilman Warren Gossessan's district and he brought the attention to the ditch to begin with. So I think that I feel comfortable that our system works. And if there's any other problems after those ditches are clean and the work's done, we are uh, assure our citizens that just like we will in any other district, we're going to address it. But like I said, you did your job, you went to the meeting, and you got our crews out there the next day. So I thank you for your hard work, and uh, don't let them rough you up. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, when you've been here as long as I have, they have some things that was done that's not on the map. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Leroy was at the parish. He came to the city. Correct. The houses uh, on Broadwood um, has 14 drain sites. I was there today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, on every mind. time someone complains about too much water, we put another drain site. We don't enlarge no pipe. We don't do anything. Behind those houses in Broadwood, they had two ditches, not just one. They had one ditch in the people's yard going to the, uh, to the bayou, which you call that commercial. They had a tree line, and they have another ditch beyond the tree line that y'all see now. Mm -hmm. Back then, they closed one of those ditches up. Okay. 
they have and crossing that ditch if you went out there and saw they got some like driveways i call it going into the cane field mm -hmm. that never used to be there that used to be an open ditch right they put some culverts in there that i think is not large enough looking at it even today so they made a restriction in those ditches what else they did that pipe that used to come from Broadwood that goes underneath the ground to that ditch mm -hmm. tees into a culvert. It used to go to the ditch. So now it tees into a culvert that I think can't handle the water. And how many times, Mayor, uh, we try to close in ditches and the engineers mm -hmm. said an open ditch is better than a closed it's ditch because it flows it's more true. water. It does. So I think what I've seen out there today and what we've done in the past that Mr. Leroy and Mr. Bruce Orr might not even know because um, it was that many years ago, i say 12 years ago or longer, um, is something I think we're uh, costing us or showing us now why maybe we should not have done that. Mm -hmm. People didn't want the ditch in their backyard. The city right. closed it uh, and we're using one ditch. And if you go look at that ditch, where the culverts are coming out is eating up and so bad because it's starving to get out. And I had this problem being a councilman district six with TYU because of that bridge that we got done on, on uh, Emil Verret that had culverts. Just because water's flowing out the culvert doesn't mean it's handling the volume of water. It's Correct. just causing some commotion. I know this sounds crazy, but I just was part of this way back when when Mr. Swear sat here. So I think we have a couple problems that could be causing this. One is the water's not flowing out fast enough because as soon as it quits raining, you give it a few minutes, half hour, it's drained. Oh, yeah. And as long as our tides down. But I don't understand, and I think that property line is where the city property stops, correct? It, it is. But then they have driveways that is going from private property to this Caneville. Now, I don't know why that's done. We need to check to see if that was done under recommendations of the city and those pipes are sized right, or if the parish came and put these pipes because they had them. I really believe, you understand what I'm talking about, yeah, Mayor? Yeah. I really think that's part of your problem is that I think you have enough drainage call, uh, uh, um, catch bases, but I think oh, yeah. the pipe is not There's large enough. There's over 70 in the whole subdivision. But I count of 14 on one street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, they do have a small bridge that goes across it. The little bridge is all the way at the top. It's not a problem. Right. Look, I thought it would get shot. I was walking people's yard all <laughs> over today. But the thing is, where it tees into that metal culvert, Mayor, they need to look into because I think that's where the restriction is. And if the parish allowed them to put those culverts, or the par parish might have did it. I don't think the city did because it's really... Uh, private residents could have done it too. I mean, Well, it's some big pipes. It's like 36 inches. Yeah, well, then they didn't. They probably. did. But I think that's something we should look into because if you can make that ditch open again like it was, how many times they say open ditch flows water much better than it might not look as good, but it flows water better. Just the idea that because I was part of that back then, okay. um, I just remember that, and that's not on the map. It's not on mine. It's just on uh, my memory. Okay, well, I got Mark Bayrod on retainer, and as you know, we moved some of our mosquito money to do more drainage projects in the city than we've ever done before, and we're going to do a lot of them in-house, which is going to save money and utilize that money to help our citizens all over town. So what I'll do is request Mark to go out and size that and make sure that it is sized properly with our system and also where it drains into the parish system. So uh, I appreciate the and Mayor, I would like to uh, and, uh, maybe meet with Mark. Sure. Because uh, I kind of know what happened, but I'm not well, sure all what happens on the map. Well, uh, since you brought it up, I'd already thought about getting him to call you. So we, okay. uh, we'll schedule a meeting, but okay. I think that getting Mark involved okay. is the right thing to do. And, Dave, I'll keep you in the, in the loop as well as your district. Thank you. All this was uh, at that meeting, we could add a lot of answers answered. Well, I was on my anniversary. Oh, sure. Yeah, so you know, he wouldn't he <laughs> wouldn't have been there anyway. Oh, good going. And we got and you got all your drains clean the next uh, day. I Look, know, you you know, you know the, all this is a process. It's a process. I'm not the only one with drainage trouble. You've been you've been talking that the whole time. And I I just want to bring up my my little spot of uh, major trouble. I hope everyone brings up and we handle them one by one and do what we have to do. And we will. And we partner with our parish council people and parish government at, at every turn. Matter of fact, I don't normally do this, but we have two parish councilmen here tonight, and it is Warren's district. Warren, is there anything that you need to add to this? No, I just want to be able to say thank you because uh, for so long the city and parish had worked together on issues like this, and 
it's been a pleasure to be able to see those fences torn now between us and the conversations going on between both administrations. But there is a problem there, and I promise before I leave off, we're going to fix it. <laughs> All right, good. Well, I got Mr. Bruce Arnold on it. We're going to get there. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Swift. I can relate to Mr. Bruce Arnold with what's going on with his deal um, in his district. I don't really know much about your district because that's not my district, but at the same time, I thank the mayor and whoever has cleared up that is a parish ditch, mm. but I also thank the parish for stepping in and oh, definitely. to get that done. Now, you already answered my question about the culverts. Were those culverts put in by city? Were they put in by residents? We're going to figure, figure that out, and we're going to figure out if they're the right size. We don't know, so I guarantee um, we didn't do it. <laughs> do I? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we didn't do it. Well, yeah. Okay, well, you were here at the end, so yeah. we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, on the, record. the question I have, being that we're talking about water coming out of the city into Paris, you know, Mr. Mr. Dahl brought up TYU. We did bring it up uh, a few months back about doing a resolution um, to get with the parish mm -hmm. about cleaning, or I guess maybe looking into cleaning that area out towards the parish, see what they can do to step in on the outfall on their end. Because we are seeing it again, mm -hmm. it's happening more and more. Okay. Um, did we, uh, we? I don't think we did we that. Never did. It was going to be put on a, a, well, a later agenda. Watch this, yeah, Madam Clerk. Can we get a resolution at the next meeting? Yeah, but we, we don't. We, have to we, we really don't have to because yeah. we now have that cooperative endeavor agreement yeah, that correct. we just signed that lets us do that those things. Um, right. So, but I think Mr. Bruce for hmm? putting the plug in and, and trying to get it done. I think the parish, Mr. Stephen Salander here. To Dr. Sands and, and we're working together. And like you said, with the fences are down, and it's all about communication, and you are communicating very well. That's the business win. So, but I appreciate it, Mr. Bruton. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, now we move on to item 11. Councilman's remarks. Uh, hit it on Marlowe's side and go around the table. Well, all I want to do is wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, hope that they be safe. Um, Shooters, stop shooting. Go to bed. Let people rest and enjoy the holiday. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. B. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Appreciate all that support of the whole council we have here at New Council. It's been almost a whole year. Getting there. We appreciate all the help from the city and the citizens for giving us some remarks, like even this drainage drop. 30 people were at this meeting. So we thank y'all for all y'all support. Thank you. Well, um, you're right, Mr. Broussard. We got a lot to be thankful for. And one thing we want to pray is for the families that's coming in on a, to visit other families to be safe on the road. You know, um, had some good friends of ours and Freddie's too got in a bad accident where, you know, no matter how much control you think you're in, you're really not. You know, and that's sometimes that's sad. And something else we need to do, uh, people have been noticing maybe in down um, in New Iberia, we got new places to eat starting to open up. Go give it a try, you know, because um, they got confidence in us to put money and invest in this community. We need to have confidence and go and sure. try their food to, uh, to show them we appreciate that, what they do. Thank you, ma'am. Good, thank you. Yes. I want to say that uh, St. Edward St. Jude Church Parish celebrated its uh, centennial this weekend. It was a very mm -hmm. uh, that was nice. Yes, <laughs> our mayor was there and he presented the the church parish with a, a pre he made a presentation uh, to commemorate the centennial that was celebrated. Also at our neighborhood watch meeting was which was this past Thursday for districts four and district five, uh, we we had a great meeting and it was really really great participation. And the holiday social that followed was very joyous. I, I do invite everybody who came to that particular meeting to come back. We are not having a meeting in December, but we're going to have it in January. And I'm hopeful that maybe our new police chief can be in attendance in December, I mean in January or February, whichever is good for you, you know, to come in, a, a, you know, just be with us and give us a presentation. Also, in closing, I want to wish everyone a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you. 
I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple of comments. The uh, Kiwanis uh, pancake supper was held last week was actually a success. It was a long day. I don't think I want to look or eat a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was successful. We're going to see what the numbers are yeah. hopefully next week. But it was, we had a good bit of numbers uh, plate served. So we thank the community for coming out. And, and uh, it's a good cause for children. Um, so that's a good cause. Um, talking about the police chief and neighborhood watch. I'm sure he's going to be pretty busy coming up soon going on the neighborhood watch. And, uh, but also, I also want to wish everyone a happy and blessed Thanksgiving as well. And uh, thank you. Great. I just have a couple. Of course, I want to wish everyone a good Thanksgiving and stay safe. And I just have to say, with nights nice like tonight, watching our council work together, watching us move our city forward, uh, bringing in our new police chief, we got a lot to be thankful for. We are blessed as a community. Yeah, we got issues, but we're working on them. And tonight is proof of that. So I just want to commend all of you that, you know, we have become a team. And we go through the, you know, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Sometimes we get along, sometimes, you know, we question things. But, you know, we do the right thing, and in the end, this just gives me the confidence to continue to push and continue to move this city forward because I got the best team behind me I could have. So I thank all of y'all. Y'all have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, next meeting is December the 5th, and I'm looking for that motion to get out of here. Motion second. Great. Thank y'all.